Hello Nidorinars and Nidorinos, I'm King Nidor and today we're coming from Golden Road City where the guild are hosting the Medali Aethers and as that shining Corviknight is exerting its pressure over the normal types, let's have a look at that tail of the tape as the Aethers have got a four game win streak and they want to get their fifth here again today to try and move themselves into an elite four position but the guild are coming off a massive upset and they want to repeat that here again. So with that said, let us know in the comments below who you think is going to win this match. Will it be the normal types? Will it be the flying types? Let's go! And it is going to be Screamtail as that Terrastal Draftee for the Golden Rod Guild being joined by Arbor And as we said, Corviknight, the Rowan Award recipient from last season, being joined by Gliscor on the side of the Medali Aethers. Both these sides with a lot to prove, but it is Screamtail with that speed control. Immediately going with that super effective blue flare onto Corviknight, getting in massive damage, but Gliscor is going to respond with the Harden. It is going to boost that physical defense that's already base 125 as Corviknight does look to follow it up with the Wild Charger. We'll get a little bit of recoil damage from that, but does get in some good damage onto Screamtail there as I believe I is going to go with the Twister, connecting with both flying types, but it's not very effective on Corviknight as the Splash from Screamtail after such a strong start, nothing is going to happen from that splash, allowing Gliscor to try and capitalize with the Psycho Cut, getting in some more good damage there onto Screamtail as the Soft World from Corviknight will restore its health after it took that massive damage from the Blue Flare. We do have our Believer going and setting up for the Electro Shot. It is going to boost its special attack on this turn. That's base 125, but if it goes for Gliscor, it will not work because it is a part ground type Scream Tail, though, with the Flame Charge. Continuing for those super effective moves onto Corviknight gets in some good damage, but the speed boost as well wanted to maintain that speed control. Gliscor with the Fairy Wind, though, looks like they're trying to get Scream Tail off the field here. Corviknight following it up with the role play, but unfortunately that is going to fail, allowing our believer to complete the electro shot, and it is going to go for Corviknight to get the super effective elimination, taking out the Rowan Award recipient, the first elimination in this matchup, but it is going to be Roaring Moon, the Medallion Aether sending out their own Terrastal Drafty onto the field to go head to head with Screamtail, these two Terrastal Drafties on the field at the same time we'll find out who is scary but you do not want to run into either of these pokemon on a bad day as Screamtail maintaining speed control is going to capitalize on being a normal type going with the fury swipes here for that stab boost on to roaring moon if it can get all five connections it will do a great deal of damage but it's only able to land two allowing roaring moon to respond with the retaliate super effective it gets the elimination there of Screamtail, a fantastic response. I'm not sure if that actually was super effective. Let me know in the comments below. I do not remember the type of that move. But we get Gliscor with the head smash follow-up onto I believe we get in massive damage. Does get some recoil damage in the process there, but I believe is going to respond with the dragon cheer. Unfortunately, it has no teammate to cheer on at the moment, so that is going to fail. But it is going to be Porygon's here coming out to join it on the side of the guild. Roaring Moon with the coaching is going to be successful in helping out its teammate, giving it a physical attack boost to Gliscor there, as well as a physical defense boost that was already boosted earlier. It, and Gliscor follows it up with the defog on to Porygon's here, lowering its evasiveness, who does respond with the arm thrust, going for more multi-hit moves on to Roaring Moon here. And it's doing very little damage, but once again, if it can connect with all five, it does begin to add up, although all five do not look like they're gonna be doing much damage whatsoever here to Roaring Moon with those not very effective moves. Even with those critical hits coming into play, it did connect all five times, I believe. With the liquidation follow-up, looks like they wanna get Roaring Moon off the field, gets in some good damage there as well, but Roaring Moon is going to respond with the Kowtow Cleave onto, I believe, to get the elimination, putting the Medallia Aethers in front they want to show that they are for real this season as we get the soft foiled now from Gliscor who has been in since the start of this matchup the only one remaining it is going to get itself back to full strength Pogon Z though with the spite not trying to get the elimination of Roman Moon instead it is going to cut into its PP here hoping that it can make it struggle in the future and it is going to be Ursaluna coming out for the Golden Rod Guild 
making the Aethers too nervous to eat their berries with that unnerveability. And the Mac Punch, massive damage there being done to Porygon Z from Roaring Moon with that super effective move and Gliscor with the Steel Roller, but unfortunately that is going to fail. This opens the door for Porygon Z to try and capitalize as it goes with that consistent damage on the Seismic Toss onto Gliscor. And Ursaluna is gonna follow it up with the Home Cause. It's just boosted that 140 base attack as well as boosting that accuracy. You do not wanna take physical damage from Ursaluna, who's on the receiving end of a super effective Aqua Jet from Roaring Moon. They want it off the field. Gliscor follows it up with the Terror Blast onto Ursaluna. They definitely want that park ground type gone as Porygon Z with the Drain Punch does put Roaring Moon into knockout range with that not very effective move. And Porygon Z does get a little bit of health restored in the process. Ursaluna with the opportunity to follow it up does go for the conversion, trying to change its type, but unfortunately that is going to fail, which opens the door for Roaring Moon to try and capitalize. Going with the Iron Tail, and it has just eliminated Porygon Z from this matchup. Glasgow with a chance to follow up goes for the Trick Room. It's going to change the speed order. And Ursaluna is currently the slowest Pokemon on the field. This may actually benefit the guild as Ursaluna with the Scorching Sands will not benefit them because it is not going to work on the flying types. And it is Snorlax coming out now for the guild who does have speed control going for the Leaf Storm. But that is going to be avoided by Roaring Moon. However, Ursaluna looking to follow up goes with the Poltergeist. And it is going to be going for Glyscore attacking it with that leper berry here, and it gets the elimination with a critical play. The Golden Red Guild needed that elimination. That's only their second one for the game. Rune Moon with the hex, it's not going to work on the normal types. They are immune to ghost type moves. As out comes Bravery for the Medaliathers, and Snorlax is going to go for the Ice Shard. That super effective damage to eliminate Rune Moon, and just like that, the Guild have leveled the playing field against the Aethers. It is now a three versus three matchup and Ursaluna with a huge opportunity to follow up goes for the mega kick and it is a one hit wonder to complete the huge play and put the golden rod guild in front out comes Mandibuzz and it is going to be joined by Dragonite for the Medaliathers the guild are in front Snorlax with the peck on to Dragonite gets in some good chip damage Ursaluna follows it up with the aerial ace they want Dragonite off this field getting in massive damage there Mandibuzz though with the heal pulse that is a massive error because it is not going to be healing Dragonite instead it heals Ursaluna back to full strength Dragonite though with the cow tower cleave on to Snorlax gets in some great damage but Snorlax does respond with the shell smash it is going to cut into its defenses both physical and special but it's going to boost its own attack that's base 110 as well as boosting that special attack it does boost that speed as well but i still do not think it will be quicker than dragonite or mandibuzz as ursaluna is going to go for the bullet seed and this multi-hit move is going to be heavily heavily resisted sorry by dragonite here connecting for three there even getting a critical hit on that third one. If I had gotten more, it might have put Dragonite into knockout range, but Dragonite is going to respond with the Psy Strike onto Ursaluna. Gets in some really good damage there as well, and Mandibuzz looking to follow it up. Goes for the double kick. They want that boosted Ursaluna off the field, but if they went for Snorlax with those lowered defenses, could they have gotten an elimination? As Mandibuzz lands those two super effective connections, the Twisted Dimensions do return to normal, and Snorlax actually is the quickest on the field, going for the Screech on to Dragonite, lowering its physical defense a great deal. Mandibuzz, however, looking to respond, goes for the Wild Bolt Storm, which will not work on Ursaluna, but gets in some good damage there on to Snorlax, and Dragonite, with an opportunity to follow up, goes for the Gravity. It's going to bring itself and Mandibuzz down to the ground. They are no longer immune to ground type moves and I'm sure Ursaluna is going to love that if it can capitalize here as it is gonna go for the triple arrows on to Dragonite to get the elimination with that not very effective move. Mandibuzz is all by itself. It has three normal types to contend with. Snorlax follows it up with the Mud Shot which will work thanks to that gravity. It is gonna slow down the speed of Mandibuzz as well. And now Ursaluna is quicker than Mandibuzz. It goes for the Hyper Voice. With that special attack and damage, it is not a Blood Moon form, allowing Mandibuzz to respond with the Rock Wrecker. Not very effective there. On to Ursaluna and Snorlax with the Stone Edge. That's super effective move. The Golden Rod Guild have come back 
finish him with a critical hit as well to get the critical victory. Two upsets in a row. They have ended the win streak of the Medaliators in impressive fashion. Everything turned around once Ursulona came onto the field, and in doing so, the Guild have moved themselves up to ninth place, whereas the Aethers stay in sixth. And next round, the Aethers still need to prove they're for real because they're going up against the Verbank Plasma, whereas the Guild next round are going up against the Hammerlock Dragon. It's can they get another upset? But until then, Nidorinos, Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on field. And if you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, share, subscribe, and more importantly, always remember, you are awesome, and I'll see you when you see me.